Prepare yourself for five stories of pure steel carnage. If you came here because you don't know about Robosaurus, uh, oh man, I'm so excited to share everything with you. Robosaurus is fun, it is absurd, it is silly, it is terrifying, and it is serious. Like you can't make something like this without some serious technical knowledge. And one of the things I love most about it is that it's endearing, it really is endearing. And I don't know how a 20 ton robot dinosaur just incites this like whimsy and silliness and fun. It's inspiring. Coming soon, it's Truckosaurus, the movie. One man said, you know what? I can make that, I can make that. And he did. Not only did he make it, he got money to make it. That's art. Like this giant robot is art. And I know that like, you can argue, oh, well, it just goes and lifts cars and blows them up for people's entertainment. But I don't know, that seems like art to me. So yeah. Robosaurus may demand your attention by breathing fire and ripping a car in half, but I think the guy who invented Robosaurus deserves your attention. This is Doug Malawicki. He's the inventor of Robosaurus, but he's also a rocket scientist, inventor, Guinness World Record holder, one of the oldest ultra marathoners on the planet, and in his spare time, he creates award-winning board games. The man is a literal genius. And if that wasn't enough to convince you, just wait until you find out how he worked on some of the most iconic engineering projects in the last hundred years. I'm gonna get to Robosaurus, but first, to fully appreciate Robosaurus' greatness, you kind of have to understand Doug. <laughs> Hi, I'm Doug Malawicki, um, uh, aerospace engineer who became a mad inventor. Uh, been around a long time, I'm 82 years old. I grew up in the south side of Chicago, 10 feet away from the railroad tracks, the commuter trains. Got interested in model airplanes Back when I was a kid, had an uncle who flew bombers in World War II. I had to become an aeronautical engineer and uh, did. University of Illinois got a BS, Stanford and MS in the same, aeronautical and astronautical engineering. My first job was Lockheed Missiles in Space. This was the Polaris. Polaris missiles arrive at Cape Canaveral for their first test firings from the nuclear submarine expressly designed for the job, USS George Washington. We were doing the programming because this is the later one, A3, I think, and it had three warheads. So I spent, uh, you know, a couple years on that while I was going to school, and then I said, oh, Apollo, I want to go work on the manned spacecraft. Then my next job, North American Space and Information Systems working on Apollo, the Man to the Moon Project. I was a dynamics analysis engineer on the Apollo program. That's where they made the command module, where the three guys live in. We had different stuff going on there. Um, one of the things they had was a launch escape tower on the top. In case the Saturn booster blew up on them, pull them up at like 10 Gs, which they didn't like. They said, that's the limit, no more than 10 Gs <laughs> to pull them away from this thing. Oh yeah, then I worked on the B-2 stealth bomber for Northrop. Can't show you any pictures of that because that was top secret classified. I had a lot of fun there. I was working at Centuri Engineering as the chief engineer when uh, Evil came to town because he was going to jump at the local B-line Dragway, and this was maybe seven, eight months after he had that famous uh, Las Vegas crash. The artist, Tom Cameron, says, hey, let's go down to the Ford Agency where we see his Jump Canyon rocket. So we went there that afternoon, and I looked at it, and I'm saying, what? He's got flat plate airfoils, had a crazy beyond stall 45 degrees angle of attack, and I was familiar with the kind of rocket motors he had, Turbinique, and that's supposed to go to the thermoline propellant tank and then a pressure tank and he's got it running up to the gas fuel tank. This is a total hoax, you know, I said that. And Tom says, well, leave him a letter. He says, why should I do that? Well, leave him a letter. Come on, that'd be a good idea. So guess who calls me the next day? Because I was pointing out all this BS <laughs> about his rocket. And then a couple weeks later, I had the job. I designed Evil Knievel's X-1 Sky Cycle. I knew enough about rockets, I knew enough about aerodynamic performance. Uh, I had a buddy who could do computers, because the computers are pretty early in that day. And we ran, you know, what thrust would we need to hit that far corner with a model? 
and that was what we tested later and it sure did perfect. For a young kid like myself, it was kind of fun for a while, but then, you know, why am I doing all this? For, this took a few years. You know, this was not something we did in six months. There was a, a lot of back pay, you know, sending checks in because they weren't clearing and all that. Uh, and then the bonus never happened. He talked his way out of that, so I quit. So then Bob Truax, who's the guy I brought into it because he has the patents on the steam rockets, just used his Thunderbolt Dragster. Okay, back when Truax was in the process of building this replacement, they threw mine as like this was a serious test and it just went and then straight down into the river, okay? But the nose weight to make it stable wasn't there. There was no human, no 180 pound human in there. And it still tumbled a couple times and then became, and became a lawn dart going down to the river. It had a, in case something happened and he wasn't thinking, well, if he left his hand go of that handle, a du double handle, squeezing something together, then the chute would come out. Well, the initial G's must have just pulled his hand because he didn't know what five G's meant. Never had any testing. I have to grab down under the seat with the belt webbing, where the belt webbing is to hold myself down and at the same time think, whatever you do, don't let go of this and grab down on the seat. I mean, I have to hold that back. But I think there'd be so much G force on me that when I go up, I'm not going to have any choice. I mean, I am going to be back. And I think that'll, that'll work all right. Uh, if I don't black out, boy, when he tells me to blow that chute system open, I'm going to get it open. That baby's going to come down okay. I wasn't concerned about that. I was concerned that if you started to red out or gray out or black I might out, let go of it. You might have trouble holding on to not know what you were doing with it. Oh, I, I probably would, but uh, I'm not planning on doing that. I'm going to stay awake. Do you remember like, how you felt when you were watching it? Uh, whew, good question. Well, he didn't make it, so... I'm saying, well, maybe he should have been nicer to me. That's about it, you know. Two, one. Oh, come on! Okay, Eagle, stay with the bird, stay with the bird. It looks like you're going to go into the canyon. It just cleared, just cleared, just cleared the, rocks, the rocks, thank God. It looks like he is in the water. I don't know what happened. It, uh, you lost the spring? Uh, it, went, hold the it, it went sideways. That was the best outcome possible for evil. If he would have made it, like, so what? We already been to the moon. And if he would have died, that would have been the end of him. But to get bounced around and cut up a little bit, that was great. He's still a, a hero to all the Hell's Angels people. They really tore up that town of Twin Falls there, too. Oh, you want to hear about what Robosaurus is? It is a transformer that breathes fire, becomes this 40 foot tall thing that can reach, lift a car and put it 50 feet in the air, and then bite it in half and burn this, burn that. Everyone loves it. And it folds up into a legal trailer. So a lot of our design criteria was I forgot the lengths now, but it could, had to be a certain length, couldn't be any more. Eight and a half width, I remember, 13 and a half foot tall. And what did it have to weigh? Less than 39,000 pounds or something like that? The idea for Robosaurus came from three of the guys that worked for me when I was at Northrop working on the B-2 bomber. One of the guys says, Doug, you should build a transformer next. The next guy, Jim, said, yeah, it should be fire. And the other guy says, yeah, it, sh it should chew up cars too. And I says, Holy cow, I know I could raise money for that. Then uh, I took it to my partner and other things, Gary. He says, Doug, this is the first good idea you ever had. <laughs> that was pretty funny. The first time, well, that we took it out. In fact, we had to rent a place with a garage type for tractor trailers to fit in. So we took it out, put it in a parking lot, put it out, and it was just a frame. Didn't have any of the skin stuff. We learned a lot there, too. And I had to do all the stress stuff. In other words, you got this much weight here. It's going to crush cars. How much force do you need? What's We had to do tests with these uh, teeth, you know, uh, with a, in a, like a giant hydraulic vise to make sure they could pierce steel and stuff like that. That was fun. There's the hole the tooth made, boys. 
and I have saved this. What, how many years is it? 89? Oh boy, it's over 30 years old, but this is something I'm going to keep forever. This thing, we were so happy when it worked this great. 20, 24 uh, thousand pounds of thrust in that jaw, eating cars. Just tears the roofs off. People love it. Cummins diesel with 400 horsepower. That's what that thing ran on. And the back end was a big hydraulic fluid tank and all these valves and everything. And the guy up in the head, that was the pilot. The real toy transformers always had a guy up in the head. He had a crazy control system. So when he'd move his hands or these fingers, the claws would open, close, the arms would move. Had to use his feet to steer it around. All kind of crazy things like that. It was, it was a lot of fun. We, it took a year and a half. One of the highlights was the day we killed Herbie the love bug. We had a Volkswagen. It just crushed it to nothing. That was great. Happy day. You crazy car. I don't know whether to eat you or kiss you. When you get uh, somebody like The Simpson Show emulating it in one of their episodes, you say, ah, I think it's a cool toy. Yeah. This thing is pretty impressive. And you see people, and I got photos if you haven't seen it. That, dwarfs people. They're amazed with this insane, you know, don't ask me why I like insane stuff, but I do. <laughs> it's done military bases. It's done just regular uh, monster truck shows. At this, the GM Motorsport Spectacular, the star of the show is Robosaurus. After 18 years, we sold it at the Barrett Jackson auction in Scottsdale. The new guy is still operating in a occasionally. Jay Leno was on, I don't know, a year or two ago. So they're, he's still having fun with it. <music> Humans are constant change seeking mechanisms and uh, I like that. Some people are willing to do the same thing like in these aircraft places. You know, Other guys are, they're working on the 32nd rib on the right wing for the rest of their lives. Uh, I'd go nuts. I'd get bored. Even Apollo, you know, after a while, you know, you get bored with that kind of stuff. You want to do new stuff. My life has I been a spoiled kid and I just want to play. Maybe that's it. And I've worked that out so I can do that. And I have a good wife that somehow enables that to a degree. She doesn't give me a hard time when I go off and do all these crazy things. <laughs>